Okay, most likely you have some silicone in your kitchen. You might have one of these, one of these, most definitely one of these. Okay, so if you have not visited, let's say, Joann's or Michael's in the baking department, you might not be familiar with these. This is actually, these are for candy. These are to make confections and they're meant to be filled this way. But as you can see, they make great stamps. Now these are all made out of silicone. So today this video is all about silicone. Now these, this could either be a trivet or like a, you know, something to grab a hot pot. This was actually, I got it at Michael's and I think it's from Martha Stewart. What a great pattern. So I'm going to use this pattern today. And I love this. This is, um, I got two of these and I only really need one. So I am taking this one for the studio. This is Rachel Ray. And I'm thinking I can make brush strokes with this. I can also stamp. Um, this I recently got at Michael's and I had, as you could see, a little bit of a problem because when I would s just stamp like this, I would actually get that centerpiece not coming through. So you do have to kind of push down the center of each one, but the other side as well can also be used to make circles. So I think this is great. Of course, I love my, my, uh, these are like little lifesavers. <laughs> I love my little lifesavers. Okay, so I'm just going to use, I'm just going to play and see. I'm going to start with these colors. This is Amsterdam. We have a azo yellow medium, uh, primary magenta, and this is a turquoise blue. This is feeling a little empty, so hopefully, hopefully I have enough. I think I have another one. Okay, so I'm going to start with this, and I'm going to make my, ooh, because I wasn't, actually, I'm going to go a little heavier with this than I normally do. We're going to put some letters down over here. Haven't used this one in a while. I don't know why. The silicone really grabs the paint like off the plate. It, it does a great job. So I'm going to try. I like these curved edges too, so I'm going to kind of play with that a little bit. And I'm going to take my little brush. I'm going to try to stipple. See what this will do. It's just going to make a texture. I may or may not like that. But we don't find out until we try. Okay. So I'm going to let this dry. And um, because it's the uh, Amsterdam creamier paint, it takes a little bit longer than the fluid. So I will be right back. Oh, good grief, it's still wet. This is taking a long time. I might have to switch to fluid if I'm ever going to get this video done. <laughs> It appears to be dry. All right, so on this side, I'm going to do the yellow, and on this side, blue.
I'm going to pick it up with some rice paper, smooth side down. So because this paint takes longer to dry, I'm going to leave it for a few minutes. I'm going to set my timer probably for five minutes, probably not more than that. Okay, still feels kind of cool, but wow. Okay, so where the red and the blue, you can see the blue through here. I love that, but that's very purple. And different shades of purple. Um, <clears throat> this little this little stipple, I really do like. I have to be a little bit more careful not to get this kind of a stipple, but more up and down. This really came out nice. This is also a very nice did slip a little bit but that's okay because it gives me more dimension so anyway I'm going to switch to a fluid paint so that we can work a little quicker um, I do like the way this overlap happened over here too okay so let's get rid of these paints I'm going to switch to golden fluid I have some quinacridone red some Jenkins green which I'm going to start with and we also have some Indian yellow. And I'm, sp I'm speeding up from here on in. So you saw me real time with the other paint. That paint did take longer and I did not want to be all day at this video. So the fluid acrylics I love because they work really well on the gel plate, but they also you know they dry a lot quicker now that could also be a little bit of a detriment because if they dry too fast well then you got a problem but in this case I just wanted to speed things up but at the same time I don't think I worked fast enough so let's see if we run into any problems anyway I love this combination so I really like how I overlapped some of the text with the circles and so now I'm going to put the manganese blue on the left hand side and the Indian yellow on the right so I almost picked up that quinacridone red to go over the green which just would have given me like a probably a burgundy color so I, I'm not going for that so let's let's see what happens I don't usually put green on my plate I usually make green with yellow and blue and I have been struggling ever since I purchased this Jenkins green. I, I just never am happy with the prints. So I'm glad I, small, I bought just a small bottle because it's just not happening for me. I'm going to try to do a botanical with it and see if maybe I like it better. So let's see. But anyway, so as I said, fluid acrylics, they do dry faster. So even when you have your paper down, you usually, you know, two minutes tops and you're ready to pull. Now that little section right down in the middle and on the edge was because I was not working fast enough and my fluid acrylics was already drying on the plate. So obviously the green layer was the layer that we wanted to have completely dry. But I think even that second layer, maybe I just wasn't working fast enough. So we're going to work again with the Jenkins green. I don't give up. <laughs> um, and we're going to do some more stamping. I think I'm going to overlay a little bit more on this one. So you might see that I'm almost like pulling off really quick almost like you do like when they when they I when they wax your eyebrows you know 
<laughs> like really pull up fast. I like all that overlay. And of course we have to wait for this to completely dry. So on this next layer, we're going to do some manganese blue with just a touch of titanium white, just to lighten it up a little bit. And we're going to stamp again, but with the big circles. I'm just taking a peek to see what it looks like underneath. Anyway, I'm kind of overlaying again, letting it dry. So once it's completely dry, I'm going to go over this now with Indian yellow. Now you'll notice that first time I put the circles down, it picked up really well. Did not pick up the second or third time. I mean, it picked up, but not quite as much. So we end up with a really strong color in those big openings. Anyway, this is going to take probably about two minutes with the paper down. And I'm just stopping every once in a while to see, is it cool? Is it still a little bit cool? Anyway, it appears to be done. So I'm very happy with this. But like I said, those yellow circles were almost a little bit too much. And I didn't push down in that center area. So I almost got like the little halo effect like I was telling you. And the blue, we've lost the blue. It's just, it blended with the Jenkins green just a little bit too much for me. Okay, so I've given up on Jenkins green and I'm going back to Payne's gray, which is always a good, uh, nice contrasty color, which, you know, with all of my prints, you may have noticed, I like a light color, a medium tone color, and a contrasty color. So, in this particular session, I used the Indian gold, the Indian yellow, just a, not light enough for me. And the Jenkins was, I don't know, it was just making things a little, I don't know, maybe I'm just not a fan of green, uh, or at least not the, that particular shade of green. But anyway, I'm putting in my, I'm stamping again, overlapping, and doing a little bit of stippling. And we're starting to get some lacing happening here. So we'll see what happens. So now it's dry. And I'm going to put down some Indian yellow. Which, similar to black, it's coming up a little green. but I'm not putting it everywhere. You might have noticed. I left some, I left some areas. So I'm stamping through the yellow while it's still wet. And of course I left a piece of paint. So you might see with the silicone, the acrylic paint doesn't permanently stick to it. So it peels off. So you have to be careful not to let too many layers stay on the uh, silicone, uh, what are we gonna call that? <laughs> um, the candy thing. Uh, so anyway, I'm carefully picking it up so I don't ruin my print. And I just wanna show you, you can just peel them right off. You could probably soak it a little bit in some warm water and it'll come up even quicker. So, very satisfying actually. Okay, so now that that's all dry, we're going to put some quinacridone red. So in the areas where I didn't put the yellow, we should see a stronger red. 
And in the other areas, hopefully it will mix with the Indian yellow and give us a nice, you know, beautiful golden color. Not really sure because it's Indian yellow. One of the reasons why I love Hansa yellow so much is the way it interacts with the other colors. Okay, while we're, while we're waiting for this to dry, you, if you're familiar with my channel, you probably have seen me use this. This is a catalyst wedge that I use during collage to smooth things out, get out the bubbles and stuff like that. So this is just the flat one with a little, little curve on this side, bigger curve on this side. It's uh, easy to hold. They have other ones. So they have this one that has the pointed edge on two sides and you could make designs on your plate with that. And this one, as you can see, has like little square points that sort of graduated so that from thin to thicker. So that's kind of fun. So on the next print, we'll combine maybe our circles and our trivet with this and see, you know, see what we can do. Okay, so we have different, different shades of the red because some of it mixed with the yellow and some of it didn't. So that was why I didn't want to have overall yellow because then the entire thing would have been like this. So in some cases we have stronger red, pinks, and um, you know, much stronger reds. So we have a variation. Okay, next one I'm going to use Hansa yellow because I think this yellow is a little too deep to give me what I really want. Okay, so now we're switching to manganese blue. We're going to use the Hansa yellow on this one as well, and the quinacridone red. Okay, I'm going to use my catalyst wedge to make a design. And as you can see, it really cleaned. We're going to get nice clean lines in there. And I'm using my circles again. And my, and my letters. I did a little bit of overlapping there. I got a little tiny piece of something on the plate, so I just cleaned that up. Okay, after it's dry, I'm putting the red down with a little touch of yellow, and I'm using my smaller brayer so that I can control exactly where I'm putting that. I only want it underneath where I did the catalyst wedge. And I even like that little bit where the yellow didn't mix that well. So then on the other side, I'm going to just put Hansa yellow. Now the Hansa yellow and the manganese blue makes a beautiful green. So you shall, you'll see what I'm, why I love the Hansa yellow so much. And I'm looking at my clean off sheet. Oh, wow. I hope I kept, I kept that one. So after about two minutes, that, that center area is still feeling a little wet to me. So I'm kind of just keeping it a slightly longer time. And I did have a problem there where it didn't pick up right down the center. Really weird. So, but anyway, as you could see where the red and the blue made this nice purple, purple color in the background. And I love the green that you get with the manganese blue and the Hansa yellow. It's a beautiful green. I am loving how this looks right here. I think I'm going to scan that. <laughs> See if I can get this off without tearing. 
Yeah, I like that. Whenever I can, I try to save my roll-off sheets because they are sometimes very interesting. On this next one, I decided to pull out the Thalo Blue Green Shade. I think it's the green shade. <laughs> um, because it's a little bit darker than the manganese blue. It is also very transparent, but it's a very deep, rich color. And, and over the many years that I've been painting, um, when I was doing just regular traditional painting, this was my go-to color. It's like I, I mix this with other colors all of the time. So I did have a, a print in between that kind of stuck to the plate and didn't come out so great so I, I just didn't even bother to show you but that's that paint that's stuck right there in the middle towards the top and I'm hoping oops ah whatever accidents happen so um, I'm hoping that um, I'm going to be able to pull that off as part of this print if we're lucky and, and if not, then maybe it'll be on a future one. I like when you pick up grunge from a previous print, especially one that didn't turn out so great. And then I don't, and I really mean it was a mess to the point where there was a lot of paint stuck to the plate. So I'm leaving it a little bit longer, especially because I have those that paint, that stuck paint on there. Sometimes you have to leave it a little bit longer if you want to pull that off, and and the paper's coming off instead. So that happens, but you know that is going to be a beautiful collage. So the whole purpose of me doing this is for collage paper, and these little I love those little lifesaver circles. Um, that is going to be great collage paper. Even, even that part where the bottle fell, I'm probably going to want to use that. So I'm just going to clean this off. Grab a baby wipe and just get rid of that. Okay, so I wanted to try one more with the Thalo Blue. It doesn't seem to be picking up as nicely as it was in the beginning. So probably because I need to clean them before I use them again. So after it dries, I'm going to put the um, yellow and the turquoise on top of it. But I decided to pull out this piece of cardboard that I used in my last video because it just, I just love it. And I think it's going to be some texture that's going to be really good with this. So anyway, my back, my blue is now completely dry. I'm using a little bit of um, pyrrole yellow, um, excuse me, orange, a little teal mixed with yellow. I love this orange as well. This is a, a color combination I absolutely love. So I'm just going to smooth it all out. I think it's going to be good. So we're going to wait about two minutes.
and it's a little bit darker because the 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 paint did not pull off with the letters and the little circles the way it did in the in the first couple of ones that we did especially on the far left I would have liked a cleaner print but it's still this is going to be great collage paper especially the part with the cardboard and the cardboard and the circles those are a winner so I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sure you've thought of this before. You must have. These are tools that help us create textures and are easy to clean. That's the most important part is getting that acrylic paint off the silicone is one of the easiest things. If you don't own any, go to the dollar store and see if you can pick something up. Anyway, don't forget to create, inspire, and share, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.